Hey everybody, welcome to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Students. This is episode 31. I'm pretty excited about this. This is kind of a departure from our normal episode where I'm talking to someone who just passed the bar and, and we're sort of in that moment of enthusiasm. Uh, I thought it might be interesting from time to time to go back into the archives, since I've been doing this for 25 years, I've got some fairly deep archives, and to talk to some of our former students who've been successful and kind of get a perspective from somebody who didn't just pass the bar, but passed it a few years ago, and kind of what the world is, looks like to them and, and where they are. And I asked, I reached out to some of my former students, and today's guest was one of the people who graciously agreed to come on and do this, and I'm really appreciative of it. And so I want to welcome our guest. Donnie Kilfin, a Georgia attorney who I think you're actually in Florida now, right? Is that correct? I am. Yes. That's great. Uh, and uh, Donnie took our course back in 2012. Is that 12. Right? 2012. Um, and as, as, as you talk to folks, they're going to hear your accent. I asked before we went live if it was Boston. You said Toronto, which is odd uh, to me. <laughs> I didn't think those sounded at all like. Uh, but why don't we start with you just kind of telling your story and, and how you came to be in a place to take the bar exam back in 2012? Well, I, um, I moved uh, down here from uh, Toronto, Canada in 1996. And uh, it was my intent to uh, obviously go to law school. Um, I applied to law school as I really wanted to uh, move to Florida because my parents were in Atlanta. It was close. I liked the climate here, having come from Toronto. So uh, I applied to Stetson. I got in, and um, after three years there, it was my intent to go back to Atlanta uh, to reconnect with my family. But I got a job offer from the state attorney's office here in Pinellas County, and uh, so that sort of changed things a little bit. It was a great job offer. It's what I wanted to do. Uh, so I took the Florida bar exam uh, uh, back in 2000 and um, passed that, um, did much better in 2012 uh, on the Georgia test. Uh, but in any event, I uh, worked for the state attorney's office for six years here, uh, did civil work for a couple of years, and then uh, joined with a uh, friend of mine, a career criminal i uh, gone out on his own. We formed Hessinger and Kilfin Law. Um, and after about five years of that, I, I really decided that um, I wanted to go back and uh, spend time reconnecting with my family in, the, in Georgia because I'd been gone for so long. Uh, it was over a decade, um, and I was contemplating at that point starting my own business. And the one advantage I have had uh, being in Georgia is I could have lived with my mom and dad, which I ended up doing while I rented my house out here and learned all the ins and outs of, of running a business. It's much different from the practice of was, as you probably know, um, there was a lot to learn about marketing and accounting and uh, things that I just was not aware of or knew about um, having practiced law. So um, for me, uh, it had to be done. I had to pass the Georgia bar exam. Um, it was really, I felt like the only way that it was going to work. Um, it was just too risky for me to go out on my own without that knowledge. So um, I started on the internet and I, I saw Celebration Bar Review course and I started doing some reading on it. And um, some comments that I had read from uh, your previous clients and decided that um, I was going to um, give it a shot. So I did. Uh, I ordered the materials and. Uh, the rest is history. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, uh, so you were studying while you were working full time as a lawyer, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. How, um, all, when you think back to that all, time, how much? Day, yeah, how much time would you think you were spending on studying on, like, say, a regular weekly basis? Do you remember? Um. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Jackson, I, I I really felt like it was sort of a do or die situation for me. So I spent a lot of time studying. Um. I got home from work probably 6 o'clock. I'd eat some dinner, and I would work from probably 6.30 to 9 every night, uh, mm -hmm. just listening to the materials, taking notes, outlining. Um, and I did that for a good six, seven months. Yeah. Uh, you but started I'll early. Tell you, yeah, you started early and gave yourself a little bit of time to do that, right? Yep. Yep. And I did um, – I just uh, – I felt like uh, – the, the bar prep course that you offered was spectacular. I felt very, I felt, it, I can't tell you how well prepared I felt going into that exam. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time studying for the Florida bar exam, but again, the, the difference was I was a full-time attorney uh, while I was doing this. And so um, I, you know, it was less time I felt like, my more time pressure, but I, I felt very well prepared. I, I did extremely well. 
Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. And I remember thinking, ooh, <laughs> this guy's yeah. good. Um, yeah. You know, and particularly when you do that, when you're working, I mean, you know, sometimes people, I think, don't quite grasp how different it is to study for the bar out of law school versus when you're working and, and actually have a, a practice to attend to. Pretty different, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, it was. And um, I, I really, um, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, having practiced law for 12, 13 years, or whatever it was, um, really played into my results. I, I've got to give credit where it's due. It was it was your bar course. And, uh, you know, I have other friends down here that are Florida lawyers that also have family in Georgia and uh, saw what I did and wanted to do the same thing. So, you know, they ended up being a celebration um yeah, you've sent a lot of well. people. You've sent a lot of people our way. We're yeah. very appreciative of that. I have. Any, yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> you've been. I feel like oh, you. I owe you a great debt. I uh, really do. That's very kind of you. Uh, you know, I want to just for people that are in this process right now, uh, from somebody who's been through it a couple of times and and you know been successful and in practice. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, we hear so much about how practicing law is such a miserable occupation and terrible thing. And I know people kind of wrestle with that. Um, is there anything that you could say to somebody about why it's worthwhile to go through this pain and get licensed and, and become a member of the bar in practice? Yeah, it, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's um, it is a very honorable profession. Um, it's a profession. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's. Uh, it, it can be very trying at times. Um, for me, um, I, you know, I, I'm, I feel fortunate because, well, number one, I, I work for myself, right. um, which I, I think is uh, it, it's a good place to be. Uh, but, but more importantly, in the work that I do, I'm able to get very immediate and very tangible results for people um, that are in a lot of trouble. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm selective about the cases I take. Um, I, I help individuals that, you know, are, are really good people that have – made some, some, some poor decisions along the way, or, you know, kids that um, get a DUI, get arrested, for marijuana, you know, and are, and are facing the kind of consequences that could have lasting impacts for the rest of their lives. And I do everything I possibly can uh, to try to get them through that without those kind of uh, lasting impacts. And it, it is a very rewarding um, profession to me. It, it hasn't always been that way. It was a long climb getting here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, having been practicing now for close to 20 years, I'm, I'm in that place. And, you know, without sounding hammy, I, I, I really do believe that um, I am doing what I was put on the earth to do. And, and there's a lot of fulfillment in that. And um, most people, I think, that have been in this profession for some time will reach the level as well. It, it's, it's very well worth it. Yeah. I, I wanted to, to ask about that because obviously, as, as you and I are recording just post-election, I think there are a lot of people wondering, you know, what's the rule of law? Does it matter anymore? Does it matter? You know, are we, you know, what's going to happen? Uh, regardless of how what your politics were, just, you know, what's going to happen now? And it seems to me it's probably never been more important for people to not stand on the sidelines and to, if you're, if you've been to law school and if you're, you know, want to be a member of the bar, this is the time to jump in and, and become barred, don't you think? I mean, you know, yeah, get, absolutely. Get, get in there. I mean, you know, get in the game one way or the other, but yep. get in the game. And, yep. and, and I think, um, you know, one of the, the, the things that I love so much about what you've done for us, besides just being a great uh, source of referrals to, to people, is that you've really been a cheerleader uh, in so much of what we post and put up online and, and, and supporting that kind of stuff. Uh, and I know you've seen a lot of people uh, sort of, you know, uh, struggle with this process of taking the bar and, and, and the frustration and fears that go with it. Um, what advice do you have for people when they're they're sort of in the midst of that? It just feels overwhelming to them, you know, and they're in that do or die position that, that you described for yourself. Well, you know, it, it, it does feel that way. But I guess um, what um, what I would say is it, it's going to be OK one way or another. Um, it is very stressful. Uh, it, it, it seems overwhelming at times, but just know that, number one, there's a very good likelihood that you're going to pass the bar exam. Mm -hmm. If you put in the time, you put in the effort, and you study, there's a very good likelihood that you will be successful. And, you know, in the, in the outside chance that you're not, well, things in life, you know, you get back on the horse and you go at it again. 
And, um, you know, if you're not successful the first time, and you probably will be, you, again, you, there's a very good likelihood that you will. If you're not, go at it again. Don't give up. Keep right forward. Do never stop. Keep moving forward. And um, you'll get there. If it's not the first time, you, you'll get it the second time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. I think that uh, people can get really discouraged because it is such a hard process and going through it and then saying, you know, now what and, and going there. Uh, one of the other things I love about your story is that you you have moved through a series of different career steps, you know, uh, from being in, in public service and in the prosecutor's office and in a partnership and now out on your own. Um, I, I'm guessing uh, that you probably like being on your own. That that's a that's a good place to be as as an attorney. Yeah, I do. Yeah, um, yeah. And I know that a lot of people who are preparing for the bar are wondering, well, what do I do? You know, do I, you know, jobs are are in short supply in in places. Um, what's your what's your advice for somebody after they've they've just passed the bar? What should they be looking to do? Well, you know, I, I, I always tell people that are up and coming that um, that I and I, you know, I have a lot of contacts at Stetson and, and, you know, people I know in the community that are law students just because it's a pretty close knit community. Yeah, and, right. you know, Stetson's about five miles from here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I typically suggest to them that they start off either at the state attorney's office or the public defender's office, because um, in that capacity and, and really, I think that, you know, three years is probably what you need to get launched. Uh, more sure, but you know, after that time in that job, um, you'll know how to try a case, and it's um, that kind of position is one of the very few I think where you can start. They're going to hand you a file and say, "Okay, go try this." I mean, you, you're going to have some mentoring along the way, but um, that kind of experience is very, very difficult to get in any other capacity. I think I tried my first case uh, 30 days in. <laughs> yeah, and that my long first... huh? took that long to get there. <laughs> Yeah, 30 yeah. days. You know, my first uh, my first three, I was not successful yeah. with more of that same type of discouragement where I'm yeah. thinking, you know, maybe I'm not in the right job. And yeah. uh, it was an older prosecutor there that told me, you know, hey, hang in there. You'll get the hang of it. Don't give up. Keep pressing forward. If you're not initially successful, you can't let that stop you. And, you know, he gave me a good talking to one night when I was ready to give up and I did hang in there. And it was at that point that things began to change. And after six and a half years there, I tried almost 65 jury trials and mm. I got better. And, I um, <laughs> you know, it just goes back to what I was saying before, yeah. keep pressing forward. Yeah, and that's a great philosophy. It's a great philosophy for people as they're in uh, this process of taking the bar and, and, and uh, you know, then passing it. And I agree with you that, that most people will pass. Uh, I think there's a presumption yes. sometimes that most people won't. That's not really true. Um, and so it's certainly manageable and can be done. Well, you know, as you reflect back, and I know it's been a few years now, uh, to what uh, what the course, what Celebration Bar Review was like for you, what stands out in your mind? What what do you remember about that process? I've had people claim that it's sort of like Stockholm syndrome that they hear my voice in their their heads sometimes. But uh, what what stands out for you? Well, yeah, it, there is a certain degree of that as well. I remember. Um... Um, sending you an email um, the night after I had finished the bar exam mm -hmm. telling you how strange it was not to hear your voice on those I tapes. Yeah. It was. It, it was really weird. And you're like, hey, just chill out and relax. Um, <laughs> get over it. Yeah. Get over it. <laughs> um, but um, I, I think that what stands out for me really is just um, the, the user friendliness of your program. Uh, the materials were exceptionally well written. Uh, the lecture tapes um, conveyed the material in ways that, to me, were very easy to understand. And, you know, having been in criminal law for 10, 12 years, I mean, there were a lot of those concepts that I hadn't seen since law school. Um, you know, things like the UCC and Article 9. And, right. and that, you know, I, I had to go back and relearn that, a lot of the property stuff. Uh, but I, I felt like it was just a very user-friendly system. Um, in my opinion, as I've said, um, having taken Barbary and now sell, I think celebration is the, the best course on the market. And, um, anybody that I know that's getting ready to take an exam, I tell them, this is what you need to do. And they do it. And, um, they're successful too. Um, well, I just, I um, I, as I said, Jackson, I, I really feel like I owe you a great debt. 
Oh, well, thank you. Well, it's uh, I think it's really encouraging for people to hear somebody that's been through the fire and uh, survived it. And, and and by the way, folks, for those of you that don't know, back in the days, we actually used cassette tapes. When, when Donnie's talking about tapes, he's talking about literal tapes. Uh, we were not always online and we didn't do video. And, uh, uh, you know, the books were sometimes photocopied and not published and printed. I mean, you know, we've come a long way uh, over the years and, and a lot more things. But the core of what we've tried to do I think has always been to help people who are busy to get a passing result, to, to guide them effectively and efficiently. And I, I think you're a great example of that. I mean, you had a lot going on and you, you pushed through and you had great scores uh, on a tough test. I mean, nobody should mistake Georgia for being a, a sucker's test. It is a very tough test. A lot of subjects, right? A lot of things. It was tough. Yeah. And it's remained that way. Yeah. 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 So... That's fabulous. Well, any other advice that you'd like to, to offer to people? I know that, that you're in our uh, private Facebook group, The Extra Mile, uh, as a kind of a, a mentor. Uh, we've asked some of our past students to, to be in the, the site. And it's really, a, this is an amazing thing for me because in this community, we've got current bar students and my staff obviously monitors it. But I've got some folks like Donnie who are just there to be supportive and to help out and, and just kind of pat people and say, you know, kind of rub them on the back and say, it's okay. But, um, you know, and, and that's a, it's an amazing community. Uh, but, but anything you would like to, to share with people who are right now, as we're talking, you know, we're, we're in the midst, obviously, of preparing for the, the upcoming February exams. Um, so people are about, uh, you know, three, four months away from the, the test. Uh, what, what thoughts would you have for them? Just keep, just keep studying and, um, you know, it's just, just pace yourself and, and try to keep your stress levels to a minimum. It's, uh, it's easy to allow this to sometimes run away from itself in your own mind and to, uh, you know, to sort of have a low level panic attack from time to time, because for everybody, there's a lot riding on this. I mean, let's face it, people have jobs lined up. Some have kids and families that they're supporting and they maybe haven't been working for a few years. Vithy, you can always give me a call um, here at the office. I really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And I know that, that our students in the Facebook community appreciate uh, you and the other mentors who are there. And uh, it's really a nice thing to, the, we've got people that passed and, and, you know, the bar exam is not the most fun thing in the life, you know, and so they're willing to come back and revisit that, you know, to help other people out. That, that says a lot. I think we talk a lot about uh, kinder and gentler profession. And I think, Donnie, you're a perfect uh, expression of that. And uh, I'm, Thanks, Jackson. I'm, I'm very proud to have you as an alum, as a student, as a friend. Well, it's been great having you with us today. Thanks for taking the time out of your schedule uh, to, to share your, your experiences and thoughts. Um, and for all of you who've been watching and listening, we, uh, we appreciate you sharing your time and we're honored that you would give up some time to be with us today. So I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks everybody for being with us and uh, we'll see you again on our next Hangout soon. Bye-bye for now. Thanks, Jackson.